What's up, everybody? Welcome to Break and Build. I am Brad. And I am Billy, where you take a break from your day to start building your life in a positive direction. So this is a podcast. This is episode one. Uh, we've got all, three or four episodes that we're going to be putting out all at once. So right when you're done with this, you could go on to the next one. So if you like what you're hearing, listening, like watching us, wherever you're watching, listening, do all those fun things. Um, we've got the topics kind of listed if you're watching on the video side. If you're not on the podcast side, kind of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about kind of the beginning, uh, who me and Billy are, how we met, um, and just kind of give you a brief background on Billy, a brief background on Brad, uh, and then kind of kindling the flame is what we're going to be calling a segment where um, kind of how we came back together and started uh, yeah, some ventures. Where the romance started. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got a bona fide creation, which we'll learn about what that is and kind of what that entails. And that'll kind of set us up on this podcasting journey with you. So it's bright and early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy, how are you? It's even earlier where you are right now. Yeah, I'm doing good, man. It's exciting to start doing this. Uh, I know I've actually been like thinking about doing a podcast for so long. And so when you're like, dude, I want to do a podcast with you. I'm like, yes, finally. Brad is like the technical wizard of everything. So anytime Brad wants to do something that I am like struggling to start because it has too much tech involved and my brain starts frying out, I'm like all about it. <laughs> it's like it's like you put you put uh, our two creative brains together. And they what, one thing that we've always kind of found is Billy's brain is like literally one half of the spectrum and my mm -hmm. brain is the other half of the spectrum. And it's like, there's something I'm good at and then there's something he's good at. And it's like, you put it together and you get this full, just like circle of goodies. And it's just, it's yeah, been absolutely. like that for everything that we've done. And it's, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty knuck and futz if I do say so myself. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's a good time, man, for sure. And it's like, if the crazy thing is, is like if Brad goes in one direction all by himself, it's like too crazy that like extreme. And then if I go in the opposite direction, like it's like we'll we'll be in like the mm -hmm. opposite end of the lake and we'll never be able to full circle it as well as we do when we're together. Yeah. It's like I go I go like a hundred percent extreme, like off 100%. just off the deep end, man. I am yeah. I am out in the middle of the, the the ocean, just swimming with the sharks, and then so Billy's over in the middle forward. of the in the middle of the island. Like I can't yeah, leave, I can't leave my hut, I can't leave my hut. Everything outside my hut's scary. <laughs> That's the easiest yeah. way to explain it. So that we go true. we go way way back. We go back mm -hmm. to the heydays of the shy town duo little oh my diaper gosh. babies running around in kindergarten uh that is how far back we go and to preface it how far back that is we're in our 30s right now so it's mm -hmm. not like it's not like oh, it's 10 years or 20 years like we go back like 30 years essentially so yep. it is a long time and it has been a on and off struggle of long time so mm -hmm. like we grew up together and we, we grew up in Chicago, uh, in the subs, in the burbs. And, you know, I guess <laughs> you could say, yeah, Nap Naperville. So shout out to all your shy town people, but we are not there anymore. We'll get into all that in further episodes, yep. but yeah, we, we grew up there and then I ended up moving. So there, there's not too much to our, our young life to just like talk about. So no. give you the brief kind of thing, right. Of just where we went up and down is the, I ended up moving away and we didn't talk all through middle school, all through high school. Mm -hmm. Like it was just didn't exist. And then one day I was visiting the neighborhood. I, I remember this day specifically. This is crazy. Dude. <laughs> the the, the inter, intersection of you into that point in my life was like, couldn't be any more perfect just based on like our shared interests. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. So it was like, just graduated high school. Billy's going off to college. I opened yep. up my own business and I was First visiting the neighborhood. And then I just, I was like, yo, let's go knock on Billy's door. And we just go and we knock on his door and Billy's there. <laughs> and it's just like, we're just like, oh my God. I think God. I was actually like home from school at that time. Like it happened to be like so perfect. Cause I think that it was like, already like school started and I just happened to be home that weekend on the day that you came by, which was like super perfect. Cause if I wasn't there, it wouldn't have been right. No, no. 
and I don't even, I don't even know like what we talked about or anything, but we were literally like, yo, we need to get in touch again. And we started talking about Halo. Yeah. And then, and then yep. he's like, oh, you play Halo? Oh, I play Halo. Yeah. And then we're just like, <laughs> oh my God, let's start playing Halo together. <laughs> so we just literally started grinding, playing Halo all the yeah. time. And we started like in the heydays, like, yo, come over, let's play until, you know, 7 a.m. And yeah. get fifties on new accounts and team doubles. Like, mm -hmm. let's just grind this out. Halo three, Halo three, baby. And like, so that it's like our interest was like perfectly aligned there. And then we just started talking all the time, <laughs> hanging out all the time. And it was like those, what, seven years essentially of just yep. literally not existing in each other's lives. It was like, it didn't even happen. It's, it's, yeah. it was literally like those seven years were just a blur. They just throw them out the window. It, do, it, it it didn't matter. Like we were like born to be this connection of friends and it's yeah, ridiculous. Sure. It's, it's just like going it, back it and forth. It yeah. is. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of like how our friendship restarted and when it really started in our lives was right at that, that time, you know, 18, 19 years old. Um, and you know, that kind of I don't know just, about you, but I don't really remember too much like going back from the childhood. Like there is not very many I, memories I, I have. Either. And we have videos and mom, pictures. I could tell you yeah, that. Yeah, we have plenty of videos <laughs> and pictures. My mom's like, Yeah, you guys were like best friends, you'd hang out all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, like I literally don't remember anything. Yeah. But for that purpose of coming into the life of that part, it's like I just got into college. So before that, if you would have come into my life and talked about Halo, like we wouldn't have had a common bond of anything. And because of like that exact point, I had just, I think it was, I don't know if I just started playing, but like the people next to me in my dorm were like really good at Halo um, and they abused this. us like really bad. <laughs> they had like the noob tube con, they had the, the plasma pistol and the BR combo in Halo 2 and they just smacked us. I was like, we literally lost like 50 to negative two. So like that summer that you came into the life was like me <laughs> head down focused. Like I'm going to smash these kids. Like I have to get good. And so like the entire summer I already was spending getting really good at Halo. So like you came in, you're like, do you play Halo? So we were both like actually pretty decently good at the time too, which was really cool. It was, it was very, very, very crazy how, how just stuff lines up. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where it all started and we'll get into like, all the nitty gritty of where the roller coaster goes from there and how it, it lands us where we are now, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of freaking up and downs, man. Um, <laughs> we've been through a lot. We've done a lot, created a lot. And yeah. Been through so many different industries at the same time that it's like, I don't know. It's mind blowing. Like how we transition through everything. It's the gnarliest 10 years. Like I think a human could be in with how many different potential just things happened right? Like it's, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Absolutely. So, so crazy. The next thing is you let's get a little bit more mm -hmm. into who is Billy? What are you about? Where you come from? Kind of what are you doing right now? Don't give us all the juiciness, but <laughs> give us some of it. <laughs> yeah. So basically like growing up, I'll just start with a couple like little tidbits is like health has always been intertwined in my life, which still plays a humongous part of my life. And so growing up just kind of really had some like challenges as far as like my health. And it was always just like sleeping for me. And that lack of sleep kind of always led to like having anxiety. So it was just like this like thing that like me and sleep did not have a good relationship, which now I thankfully do. I, I love to sleep, but like that just like uh, kind of like web web through my entire life, if you were to say that. And it kind of kept on going. And so like in middle school, I started skateboarding. And so that really kicked off like my life in a different direction because I got like really obsessed with my first thing ever. And I think there's a common thread in like anybody that's successful. I see it in Brad. I see it in a lot of people. It's just like getting obsessed about something and just like not caring about anything and putting in work and then doing things in overtime that when everybody else is like, okay, here's my nine to five. I'm done with this. It's like, okay, I'm going to go and keep doing that thing afterwards. And so like skateboarding competitively got me sponsored. And let's not undermine that yeah. when he says skateboarding competitively, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I looked up this, this, this dude right here, like he skateboarded with like the guys who are now the guys, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he could name drop 
I'm not name dropping for him. If he wants to name drop, <laughs> he can name drop. But he he skated with, you know, some of the top, you know, one, two, three, four, five people when they were all little kids, right? In middle school yep. and early high school. Like before and and they were even younger than you. Like the the guys who are who are doing that now, they're what, five, six years younger than you probably? Yeah, some of them. So I would, I'll just just mention a few just to you know not leave people hanging. So um, Chaz Ortiz was one of the biggest names that um, we were riding for the same shop. And the crazy thing is, is we were all eventually when I got sponsored was we we're all about the same level. So it was either do you get hurt? Do you move to California and go pro or do you quit? Like those were the only three options that you basically had. So everybody was virtually on that same level. And for whatever reason, Chicago at that time was like an uber competitive market of skateboarding, which is crazy because it's usually California and 50% of all those people on the shop eventually moved to California and all pretty big name pros. So, uh, Pat Pasquale, really good, uh, dude, he's super good. Neen Williams, big name as well has been like actually transitioned into like holistic health, which is really cool to see going from like a lot of these people that, you know, skateboarding is a culture of partying, abusing your body, not realizing that you're even an athlete, which is crazy because you take a beating when you skateboard and yeah, so that's a skateboarding man. And then eventually it led me into college and I kind of fell into like this trap of like do college, which I really respect about Brad. Um, and like your whole journey, which we'll obviously get into is like, you didn't fall into that trap of like, do your college, have your backup plan and then go and do this. It was like, find out what you like and plow that. And for me, it's like, I went to college, I was going to get my degree and then it was skateboarding, but skateboarding is such like a short term thing that like your body only has a certain amount of bandwidth for. So I decided not to move to Arizona or California like I wanted to and go from there. So that kind of like, it played a mental toll on me. And it was cool that Brad came into my life at that point, because it was kind of like, I really wanted to skateboard, but I could feel the abuse on my body my body was tired out and I was actually into drinking at that time, which eventually like spiraled me out. And, uh, like when I was 22 and that's when I really started to get into health and chiropractic and nutrition, which eventually led me to my like, personal training and on that route. And then I got my, my master's in nutrition and yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So pick a road <laughs> and Billy's gone down man. it for a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> not going to get too much into now, but right now, like all that stuff, me and Brad doing businesses together, which we'll, we'll definitely get into more of that clothing, gaming, um, which eventually led us to playing Pokemon Go and me to being a Pokemon Go YouTuber. So, yep. And we'll do a full episode on that because, oh, Pokemon Go, freaking game, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> Pokemon Go broke this camel's back of our friendship. <laughs> that was the start of the downfall. That was the start of the downfall. Stupid Charizard. All right, Brad. Now let's hear your story, man. Give us a little bit of a overview. <laughs> yeah. Bradley Weir. Bradley James Weir. That's that's my name. That's the game. Uh, so yeah. After, so through high school, I was I just pretty much just did high school. I hated school mm -hmm. so much. Like I hated school to where I can literally say I never studied for a test one day in my mm -hmm. life. I never did homework a single day in my life. And I was an A and B student. Like how I do that, I couldn't tell you. Stuff just like goes I'll tell in my you how brain. You do it, bro, because and, and it you just have like a different type of works. mind yeah. that works in crazily different. I've never met anybody that is as talented as you in the fact that like you can teach yourself anything. Like school's not meant for you because it's programmed to make you think a certain way. And you don't think that way, but you still get it done. So slow, man. School's just so slow. And you know, there's, there's one moment in school that I think was kind of the tipping point for me. And, uh, when I was in school, I was really into cars and like product design and architecture. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go and I wanted to be an architect and that's kind of, I was super creative and design oriented. Um, and I loved cars. So I did classes of like designing cars and stuff like that and souping up cars. And I, I worked in the car industry at a car wash and detail shop and stuff like that through all mm -hmm. of high school. And I kind of excelled from a, you know, just being a normal like wash attendant to managing the place when I was 17 years old. Like I just made this mm. jump in this uh, the matter of a year while I was in high school. So, you know, I'm managing 50 employees that all go to school with me. Um, so that was kind of a, an interesting situation to be in. 
And uh, I think it taught me a lot of, you know, work ethic stuff and management stuff as I was super young. But, mm-hmm. you know, the the school thing, I remember this, this specific day when I was in high school doing my architecture class and we had a project that was supposed to take us like two weeks. And mm-hmm. it, I finished, I, I did an internship for a structural engineer over the summer. So like I already knew how to do all these drawings that we were going to do in this class. Yeah. So I like bang it out in like a day and a half. And I go to my <laughs> teacher and I'm like, Hey, Typical I'm done that. with the project. Can I have something else to work in? I get told, I literally got told no. I got told no. Wow. So they wanted me to sit there in my class wow. for two weeks and do <laughs> nothing. If so I dropped Brad, the class. That is impossible. So I literally went and dropped the class the next day. I was like, I, Jeez. this is a waste of my time. I'm dropped. Cause like, that's just where my brain goes. My brain just goes, forget this. I got time right. for that. That is a waste. That is a waste of an hour and a half of my day. Every day I'm done with this class. So I dropped the class and I was like, architecture is dead to me. Ain't doing it anymore. I'm done. My, the light switch just goes off. It's done. Mm-hmm. Like, and the crazy thing is, is like we had competitions in our school of like, uh, you would design a house and then you would mm-hmm. get the house built the next year by like the construction team. So they would do a lot of cool wow. stuff. And the, the, the person that I actually was really good friends with in all of these classes, we worked on all of our projects together. We were all like in all the product design classes and, um, like car classes and stuff like that. And then we did like a miniature architecture class. And like, Mm -hmm. I swear to God, I helped him pass that class. And then he goes and (laughs) wins the architecture class after I drop it. And I was just like, dude, I would have, I would have scooped that up. That was mine for the taking. That's just like my competitive side. Like, you know, just, just like, oh man. But anyways, it, it super got turned off in school even more when that happened. Like that was really the mm-hmm. only reason I liked going to school was to do those fun classes. And, you know, after that, then I was like, okay, I'm super into work and the, this car stuff. So I get out of school and I open my own car detailing shop. Um, and okay. we'll get into like kind of that whole stuff. Cause I, I learned so much during that, but like I got investors, I, you know, got a property. I did this whole business for a while and Then I got even more into the car stuff. I went to, you know, some trade schools to learn how to soup up cars Mm -hmm. and everything. So I was just like this car fanatic for, for years. And while I was super into cars, that's kind of when we rekindled as well. So I was super into cars and I was Mm -hmm. at the same time then traveling, you know, the country essentially to play video games. And back then, like that was when esports was not a thing. This was in, you know, 2009 to 2011, and esports started, you know, on a smaller scale with Halo and um, StarCraft in like 2002 to 2005. And then it started picking up more and more and more. And, yep. you know, so I'm traveling, I'm trying to compete, I'm playing, I'm, you know, not a, pro, not a pro by any means, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'm competing at, you know, an amateur level and stuff like that. Um, and kind of just climbing that tree. And that's where we got introduced to MLG, Brad. Yeah. Thanks to Brad. Right yeah. There. Like, yeah. ML, like, I had no dude, idea what that even meant. I remember the first MLG, which is major league gaming for anybody that doesn't know. I was in Orlando and I walked into the ballroom during the finals and it was Mm. snipe down playing guardian ball and he was up in the tower and he cleans it up with a, (laughs) with a overkill. Like I know the exact clip he's in the tower and he's like, boom, 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 boom. And like, right when I walked in. So like, I just had this moment of walking into this ballroom, watching Eric get an overkill on guardian ball and like win the the thing. And I'm just like, I don't think there's anything better than those clutch halo plays. Like honestly, and I go back in my mind to all these gaming plays that like seeing somebody like drop a ball with a sniper rifle and just like pop, pop, pop. And you're just like, Oh my God, nothing better than that. And like, that was my welcoming moment to like MLG. So I'm just like, that is baked into my mind. And I'm just like, how do I do this? (laughs) <laughs> like I want to do this. I want to be a yeah. part of this. And you know, then my life super turned into the gaming industry mm-hmm. and I was, you know, working at Walgreens then and just literally my Walgreens shift was like four to midnight. I'd get right. off. I would play halo from midnight to five in the morning. Like that's what I yep. did. My whole team was West coast. So it was perfect. And you know, <laughs> I had no life sleep deprivation, for years, mm. just playing Halo, doing that thing. And, uh, you know, that led then to tons of other stuff, but got super involved in the gaming industry. Um, 
and that's where I still sit currently. So uh, mm-hmm. we basically kind of paved a path in the gaming industry. There. Yeah, and um, I work for High Res Studios right now, uh, working on some great games. I actually went through the whole esports broadcast realm of things, and we'll get super in detail into how all that works eventually. But high, now, high, but, high level. But now I actually just made the jump to the game dev side. So now I'm actually involved in the creation of the video games. So it's really, really cool learning all this stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited to kind of share that journey as I learn that, you know, with everybody and kind of the ups and the downs and how that's wildly different. But I I do like video games. And the crazy thing is, is when you're in the video game industry, there's kind of two types of people. There's one where you want to super be involved in like play games all the time still. And then like me, Mm -hmm. I was so involved in the industry and like overwhelmed with how much work I was doing. I wanted nothing to do with video games outside of work. Like I don't think, I think I went three years where I didn't play a video game. And like, that's it happens, man. that, that like for me is crazy. And now I'm like gaming again and like making stuff. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, this is, we're back in this groove We're we're feeling it. We're liking it. We're, we're, we're getting back. So that's kind of where, where I am career wise and everything and kind of how, how I got there without giving you all the details. And there's a million stories within there that we're going to break down and to like really open, like personality wise. Like I used, I'll tell you guys right now, I used to be a raging asshole. I will call myself (laughs) out right now at the start of this because the stories that you are going to hear on how I held myself, how I reacted to things, screaming at people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you can say you regret it, you can say all these things, but like, you got to learn we're human beings. And that, that is what I think the biggest thing that I will say through this is like, we're human beings. Everybody right. is going to make mistakes. Everybody is mm-hmm. going to learn from their mistakes and you're going to become a better person where I am right now, mentally and physically. And in my life, I wish, I wish I was here 10 years ago. Like For if sure. I was here 10 years ago, I would be a billionaire right now. <laughs> like I, I, straight up, I would be so much more successful because I would have had the outlook on life would have been different. How you treat other people would be different. Your work ethic is different. And it's one of those things where like, you don't believe your parents, right? Your parents always tell you all these things and all these lessons. And I went through that, save your money, do this. I did this. Mm I learned this. And it's like, I don't care. I don't care what you say. Like you're my parents. (laughs) Your opinion does not matter at all. Right. Right. You're literally your parents' opinion does not matter until you're 30 years old. Yeah, and you're like, like, wow, that was really powerful. <laughs> You've been telling me to save money for 10 years and not, you know, stupidly invest in right? inventory for right? a clothing business. <laughs> right? Like, you don't need to buy four cars. Yes, I do. No. <laughs> it's like, I do need we to buy this car. Today, at this point in time, though, with all that lessons, because, like, I think that there's a powerful thread in there that you just talked about. It's like, you have to learn these lessons and not just go through them because I think that a common way that people get stuck in life is that they're going through life and they're repeating the same lessons over and over again without taking the conscious step back of like, okay, what did I just do? And like, I feel like I've been in this situation two or three times. Like, how do I change this? And that's where like, I think we've been really positive for each other is because I think that like, you know, I bring uh, a little bit more calm and positivity and Brad brings that like really intensity and directness And so like we've both, I've gained a little bit more of that, uh, directness and intensity for the work ethic, which I didn't have so much after the skateboarding that really broke me. And then Brad has like softened himself a little bit to be more receptible as a manager and as, as, you know, a partner and everybody that he participates in. You know, my favorite word was for like eight years of my life. Yeah. No. (laughs) <laughs> you ask me you something know funny like no every time i go to brad and i have an idea i can almost guarantee that the first thing that comes out of his mouth is going to be no and this is why like yeah. always it's always like hey bro like i'm thinking about this he's like no and here's why and i'm like okay but, we'll come back the, to that <laughs> and the thing is is like there's no thinking about it right it's it's yeah. always just no can't happen can't yeah. be done and, and i learned a lot just from people telling me like saying hey think about stuff before you ask, you know, be like, Oh, good idea. Right. Tell them it's a good idea. Tell them, Oh, maybe Mm -hmm. that can work. Go and think about it for however long you need to think about it and then come back and be like, okay, I thought about it. 
here's how it could work. Here's how it can't work. Give more receptive feedback and like actual things on how it could work instead of just shutting somebody down right away and being like, Hey, that's the worst idea ever. It's impossible because my opinion is the only one that matters. Right. Right. Yeah. That's super powerful because it's like, you don't want to like disempower somebody from ideas. And like, I've seen that in myself too, where it's just like somebody will come to you with an idea and it's like, you've already done the idea, right? Like somebody's in like an elementary process of clothing or design or editing or whatever that is, right? And Brad for production or gaming or whatever that is that they may come to you and you're, you know, have a lot more expertise. It's not that their idea is irrelevant, but you don't want to disempower them. But at the same time, like, especially when you, like you talked about, you've already been through that idea. You've already worked through all that stuff. So instead of just telling them, no, you have to like resonate where they're at instead yep. of like disempowering them. And then when they maybe have a good idea, then they're like, well, Brad told me no, or Billy told me no on these five ideas. I'm not going to present it to them anymore, which right. is not what and you now want. you're discouraged and everything like that. And it's one of those things too, yeah. where the person you're talking to, because you say no, and maybe, maybe I thought about that exact same thing. And I have all these reasons in my mind already on why something like that can't work. Well, right. the way you convey it, it has to come across correctly, right? If I convey Absolutely. it as a no, or it's a bad idea, That's different than like, you know, that's interesting. I thought about something like that as well. And I really couldn't Mm -hmm. figure out how it could work. Throw it right back into their court. Like I I couldn't figure it out. Like what, how is that going to work? Like what equipment are you going to use? How are you going to do it? How are you going to accomplish it? How are you Mm going to market it? What are the goals? And then if I throw 10 questions back at you, Billy, you're going to be like, oh, uh, I'll come back with some more solid yeah. answers. Cause I didn't have any of that. So instead of shutting For it down, sure. just ask the questions right back. Instead of me coming up with the solution, yo, you come up with the solution, give it to me. And then I'll be like, yeah. Hey, tweak this a little bit. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, maybe we yeah. do this. And then you just massage it. And then you get yeah. something real good, <laughs> you know, bake that bread. <laughs> For sure. And it's powerful too, because just because we have done it or tried it doesn't mean that because we may have seen it not go in a certain direction or not work in a certain direction doesn't mean that somebody can't have a different insight that we never even had. Right. So it's super powerful. That's why I like super appreciate Brad. Even if, you know, I go to him with an idea and he happens to tell me no, or he said it works in this direction. Like Brad told me that my YouTube channel was stupid and it was never going to work. And I was like, there's like different parts of me. First of all, I never I said that. Really? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. You're like, Pokemon goes dead. That's dumb. <laughs> well, it's not going to work. That's because the game is dead. Yeah, that's because so- the game is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to swear. The game. No, the game is very much alive. At the time, the game was dead. Yeah, it was. It was slightly dying, but like. Um, but they fixed yeah, it. Yeah, so it's just like. You, you, and there's different parts of me. And you have to discover that in yourself that like. There was parts of me that came out when I was skateboarding where it was like somebody told me like, I can't do it or like, so that's the resonating factor with, I think a lot of me and I hope other people can resonate with this as well, that it's like, there are different things in your life. And some people may be on this kind of like, um, you know, limbo mode in their life. And so if somebody doubts you on something and you believe their doubt, that to me is like, you just don't really want that thing that bad. Right. But then there's another thing where like, if you're doing something and somebody doubts you and it motivates you more, Mm -hmm. that's something that you actually like are really passionate about. And like you use that doubt as fuel, like all the people that told me skateboarding was never going to work for me, or I'm in Chicago or whatever that is like that literally fueled me to an nth degree. And everybody's like, you're just a talented skateboarder. And honestly, like I sucked, like I really sucked. First time I played Halo, we got decently high. We weren't pro by any means, but like I sucked, man. It was relentless work ethic, overtime work ethic. When people are sleeping and people are doing their thing and they want to go out and party, like I don't party. We, we, I did for a little while, but Brad doesn't party. It's like we got obsessed with working. And that's like what has really inspired me and transpired into everything that we're able to do today. Yeah. And I think, I think with the whole, like just negativity, like if people are being negative and bringing you down, every single person in their life is going to be guilty of it in some way, shape or form. Absolutely. And you know, it's, there's, there's two, there's two things with that. There's, you know, do you listen to the negativity or do you ignore it? Like you said, but then it takes a very, very strong minded person and like very strong willed person 
to ignore it and to get over it and to push through that stuff, right? Like For sure. how many people just give up? How many people, if you yeah. just say, you're not good enough, you can't do that, just give up. And they say, oh, this person said, I can't do it. Just give up. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm going to say like 90% of people probably have a mentality like that of like- Probably a lot higher than that. You think it's even higher than that? So like, yeah, it's, it's high, right though? It's a lot. So I like, think it's like 99% of people because- if you think about it, like how many people have dreams? There's probably like endless amounts of people that have dreams, right? How many people are actually yeah. pursuing those dreams in an intensity that that dream can actually become a reality? Because if you're going to be a basketball player, you're not going to like on Saturday morning for 10 minutes, go and pick up your dream and shoot a couple baskets, right? Like if you're working a nine to five, you're out there pursuing basketball. Yeah. Not very for, many people for two are hours longer than that. you just worked for that day. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> And, and it's like, you have to do it nonstop and it's, it's hard to do, man. Like there's been so many times where people have just said, Hey, you can't do it. You're not going to do it. What are you getting out of it? Is what you're doing just a mm -hmm. hobby? Is it going to turn into a career? Is it this, is it that? And, right. you know, taking all that stuff and just compartmentalizing it to this mm -hmm. area in your head. That's like, cool. All that stuff's there. I'm glad you're concerned about me. I'm glad right. you're looking out for And that's me. where it comes from. It's a good way to look it, at it. It, it is. It's, it's, cons yeah. it's, it's looking out for your best interest because they don't, that person that's saying that doesn't want you to get hurt or doesn't want right. you to, you know, waste your time or put all this effort in and then mm -hmm. see you fail. Because then when you right. do fail, then they're the ones who are going to pick you back up. And True. they're the ones who have to then say, I told you so in a nice right. way without you feeling even worse. Right. <laughs> right, right. So right. it's like without, without that happening and being like, okay, I know that these people are saying the stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like, I don't right. care. I don't yeah. care what you say. This is my goal. This is my dream. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it happen. And if you can right. literally just stick it and say, I'm going to make it happen and make it happen. And like, honestly, I, I have a, Here's I'm I'm throwing it out there right now. The best Do example it. of it. Cast it. It's it's Ninja. It is Tyler. Oh yeah, Blevins. He is the prime example of that because back and, and we know him from the halo we'll stuff. probably do a, a whole episode yes, on yes. just him in general right but definitely get into it right now but but the, the easiest thing with him is he was streaming when twitch when justin tv was a thing justin, justin TV, tv was a oh thing before God, twitch hilarious it he was true. streaming with all of the halo people you know getting mm -hmm. 10 to 30 viewers probably right very mm -hmm. low numbers through for years when i say years i mean yep. years probably eight to 10 years of streaming, right? I don't know his exact yeah, numbers, but it is, a, it is a long, Jeez. cause like, think about, think about when, like it's 2020 right now, right? Mm -hmm. Halo yeah, so competitively was, started in 2005, Justin TV and okay. stuff happened a little after that. There was okay. somewhat streaming, you know, coming up late, you know, 2008, 2009, like MLG had their platform, Twitch mm -hmm. was starting So up. at least five years. Uh, minimum, right? Yeah. Minimum. And but that's that we're, we're not talking like when the, then it, when he started getting, when Halo started picking up, I still don't think he, there was too much viewership. No, no, the, the viewership well wasn't there because like yeah. esports wasn't a thing yet. Halo was at the tipping point and the starting of it. So you got to think right. you're sitting there grinding for five to 10 years, streaming to 10 to 30 of your closest friends and fans. True. Right. Yeah. And or you literally do it non stop. And then what yeah. happens? All I, I can't even imagine how many people told him that he's crazy and that it's For never sure. going to work and it's never going to grow and it's dead. And especially when Halo started to go down, mm -hmm. that's that, you know, that, that makes you just be like, oh my gosh, the game I play isn't doing right. as well. Like what's going to happen. And, but no, like he switches games, he sticks it out. He finds more community. He finds all this stuff and he starts growing and growing and growing. And then boom, Fortnite, Fortnite. hits. <laughs> he Fortnite. stuck Game it Stormy. out this entire yeah. time and he is yeah. you know at right when that hit he's the best Fortnite player when that hit pulling mm -hmm. off these amazing plays and he just goes from zero to a bazillion in a right. day like and i think there's a lot of lessons in there too that that we don't want to like overlook right like there's so many things and i think that there's like in america especially like the rags to riches stories where it's like 
you're it looks like there's just this one event that made you who you are today right like we just talked about everybody just sees that ninja gained yeah. millions of subscribers and followers and twitch streams and deals and all this stuff in a day right yep. in reality we're talking 15 years potentially right. of things that people didn't see years of constant consistent work that nobody gives credit for and everybody then sensationalizes this overnight success like hey i'm gonna go and start streaming fortnite today because fortnite is popular ninja got millions of views I'm going to be able to yeah. stream it like, okay, I'm going to start my stream today on June 25th, 2020. And by June 26th, I'm going to have a million subs. No, like doesn't work impossible, like that. impossible. Doesn't work like that. unless you're LeBron James and you already have a hundred million followers on Instagram. And you're like, yo, go check out my Twitch. Like yeah. that's the only way that that transitions. Yeah. It, no matter what you do. And I think that this comes back to like anything that you're going to do, it's not going to happen overnight. And there's always going to be the naysayers and the doubters. And you literally just need to compartmentalize that. And if you have a dream and you have your mindset set on something, mm -hmm. just work towards it, like flesh it out. Don't stop doing it. The second you start losing hope and stop doing it, it will fail like 100%. Sure. We have sure. examples of that as well. That yeah, plenty of really good quality yes. examples that had a humongous potential. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's definitely like, it's, it's just like a fire. The easiest example is a yeah. campfire. If yeah. you don't keep putting a log in that fire at some point, if you leave it alone, it's going to go out. It doesn't matter how big of a fire it was. It doesn't matter how many logs you had in there burning in 24 hours, not putting another fresh log in that fire, it will go out. And that yep. is the exact thing that will happen in any business, right? Like people want to take humongous breaks from their business. Like Losing momentum in business, and that's something I've learned in YouTube, is like detrimental. You don't understand the psychology behind people becoming dependent on you for whatever you're doing. Like there is a dependency, whether they think it's there or not. Like there's a dependency on Nike for putting out new shoes every single year for people to go and buy them. There's a dependency for every business that is super successful because they love your product. Imagine if Apple was like, Hey, we're going to take the year off. We're not going to put any new tech out, mm. no new products. We're not going to update our software. We just feel like chilling. Even though you may go back, there's a little tick mark in your mind that has now been developed that says Apple is now slightly unreliable. Once sure. you become slightly unreliable, if you have three X marks in your mind, you're not going to be their business anymore. And that's just how life works. And it's not even a conscious thought. It's just something I've seen and observed in the YouTube scene, in our business scene. And I've just c accumulated that like knowledge, just watching things happen. So with that, it starts to lead us into our last topic for the podcast this is going to be a little lengthy one. So I'd say it'll probably be a, mm -hmm. a good 20 to 30 minutes from here, uh, but it's bona fide. <laughs> so the creation yeah. of bona fide and what it is, I'm actually wearing a hoodie right yeah, now. I if you're able that. to see it and I got my yeah. hat on and, it's so, funny. It looks a little green in the gold, like with the gold overlay, it looks green, but it's definitely like it's, a, it's like a baby blue. Yeah, yeah. It's like, a. <laughs> but it's crazy, man. All these, uh, people I can't see, but I'm, I'm wearing a sweatshirt that is at this point. What? Oh boy. Be at least six, seven, six, years. seven years old. Yeah. Six, seven years old. It's funny. Cause like the seams like around the, um, where the, the strings go in and like uh -huh. the armpits and the uh -huh. cuffs, they're starting to yeah. like get a little hole in fraying. And I'm just like, uh -huh. oh no. <laughs> it's like, the sewing machine, it's like they're starting, they're starting to hit their, their <laughs> deteriorating lifespan. So what Bonafide is, is Bonafide is a clothing company. Um, mm -hmm. Billy still owns and operates it. Uh, I, I do not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this all kind of started um, our journeys, we were, we were apart. We both moved away from Chicago and Illinois. I, I just refer to everything in Illinois as Chicago because <laughs> that's, that's true, just, man. that's just how I it tell is. it all it, the time. I'm like, people doesn't ask matter. you, where are you from in Illinois, Chicago? And then they're like, yeah. Oh, me too. I'm from Chicago. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Well, let me actually tell you where <laughs> like I'm from. Like where you're from. <laughs> because like really, really like Illinois is like this thing really quick of like Chicago and the suburbs. And then uh -huh. like everything after that is like cornfields. Exactly. So it's like, yeah. you just say you're from Chicago. Yeah. It, 
it resonates and with I most think people it comes in their from head. The Chicago land suburbs, right? So instead of saying I'm from the yeah. Chicago land suburbs, you're just from Chicago. None yeah. of us usually that say you're from Chicago are actually from Chicago. Correct. It's like Elmhurst, Naperville, yeah. uh, Geneva, Glen Ellen. Like yep. there's so many suburbs. Yeah. Um, so we both basically departed from that. Um, I was, I was in a, a crazy, terrible place. Um, and I basically said, it's time to move out on my own, pick up and leave. Mm -hmm. And I took a job down in Atlanta, Georgia, working at a body shop. I was curious. I never asked you this. So I moved to Tampa before that. Yeah. It was like right? a couple months only, right? It was like yeah, real it was close. very short. So I yeah. moved to Tampa with my friend Andy, and Brad then moved to Atlanta, which was like six, seven hours away, right? Yep. So did my move influence you to move, or were you already planning on moving out? I don't think. I think I was just looking, right? Like I was mm. just like, what is the next chapter in what I'm going to do? Um, yeah. And really, really the, the tipping point, which I'll have to do more of an in-depth episode is, is my yep, cousin yep. passed away. Mm. Um, so my cousin passed away. I basically walked away from my job, um, mm. because at Walgreens, at Walgreens, like I walked away from my job because it was not cooperating with the situation that happened and it was very disrespectful mm. and we'll, I'll do a full in-depth story on that, but and you were a manager as well. Right? I was, I was a manager and you know, basically I, I walk away from that and with no notice, it was literally like my cousin passes away. Why am I doing this? I hate my mm. job. I hate what I'm doing. If you can pass away or something that bad can happen in your life at any moment, you could be walking down the street and get hit by a car. You can trip on the sidewalk and crack your head open. You name it. It can happen at any moment in time. So my, I, I just, I paused my life paused and I said, you need to live every day of your life to the fullest. And if you are not happy for a single day in your life, you need to pause and you need to start reevaluating because mm -hmm. every day you need to be happy. You need to be enjoying what you're doing. And yes, there's always gonna be ups and downs, but like if you start to dig a hole and just have this, you're just living this, this line and you're just like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm on the steady line. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like you steady need to lines go down. Yeah. Like it, you need to it's be not saying steady. it's like, it's like this. Right. Right. It's, it's a slow down, down. And you may not even realize thing. it's doing that, but it does that. You need to be saying, you know, every day, like, I love what I'm doing. I love my job. I love my family. I love where I live. I love my mm -hmm. friends. You need to be able to say those things and you need to love every aspect of what you are doing. And if you don't love one of it, pause it and figure out what needs to happen or change to love mm -hmm. it. So like, and that's multifaceted because it can be an internal reflection of like you actually, what your viewpoint on life is as well. It's not always yep. like it's an external stimulus. It could just be an internal stimulus. That's like, okay, am I just not appreciating the things that I am actually liking yep. in my life? Very true. And, and like I did, I had a good job, right? It was fine. But like, did I think I was going to go anywhere in that job? Did I want to work retail all the time? No. Mm -hmm. So then my cousin passing away, like this kid was like, you know, my next brother. And it was, mm -hmm. it was the worst thing that has ever happened to our family. And I'm sure that everybody has had terrible things like this happen, but this was the life changing kind of moment that resonated with mm -hmm. me the most. So I pick up, I get a job offer in Atlanta. I got an aunt and uncle that lived down there. So I went and I kind of stayed with them to get my feet on the ground and kind of figure out the lay of the land and stuff. And it was mm -hmm. cars, man. Like I was still in my car. Like I loved cars. I love souping up. Like she Fast and the Furious cars. was my jam and it still is my jam. Like, <laughs> what was the car you pulled up in when you first came over? Uh, it was a Hyundai Tiburon. So that was the first was car I bought when blue? I was 16 years old. It was dark. It was a dark blue. It was like a dark okay. midnight blue with like dark yeah. black chrome rims. I souped yeah. that, that bad boy up. Like I loved everything about racing. My uncle raced Camaros. So like mm. super into cars. So I was like, oh, I can go and work at a body shop. I could paint cars. I could learn how to do body yeah. work. Like I knew all this other stuff about cars. That was kind of the one mm -hmm. thing that was missing. So let's do it. And I started getting really creative. I loved, you know, painting and stuff like that already and a creative design person. So yeah, let's do it. I know nothing about Atlanta, man. I end up working in the worst. When I say worst. the worst, I mean, 
it does not get worse in Atlanta. Metropolitan no. Avenue. If you're from Georgia, you know that area. That is not a good area to like College Park, right? Yeah, like yes, and like the worst street in College Park. Mm-hmm. Like it's just known from like where all the gangs are and a lot of shootings and stuff like that. It's just it's like the south side of Chicago essentially. So mm-hmm. like you have your bad areas in every single city. That was the bad area. I worked at the bad area painting mm-hmm. cars and stuff like that. Lots of cool experiences that we'll get into further on what I learned and kind of how it, it it happened there, but that that moved me to Georgia and Billy was in Tampa. Yep. Um and what were you doing down in Tampa besides playing Halo? Yeah, so Tampa basically kind of like Brad did. Um I wanted to move, but I really wanted to move to California and I had a friend out there and I basically told my friend I was like, "Hey man, I have the money. Like just tell me a day." And I'll just be out there. I know your lease goes up in August. It was like June. And he just never got back to me. And I was like, man, like I kept on him. I'm like, dude, like literally I have everything. I have money. I have a car. I'll drive out there. I'll be your roommate. And like never got back to me. So Andy was talking about moving to Florida. And I really just wanted to move just like Brad. Like I, you know, been in Illinois all my life. And Andy was like, I want to move to Orlando. And I was like, you know, I don't know if Orlando is going to be the place for me, but I'll come down there and check it out. And if it's something that I'm interested in, cause I just really want to be the beach. Like I'm just a beach person. It's like kind of like my Zen, the beach, the sand, the ocean, it just kind of calms me. And so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go to Tampa or we went down to Orlando and I was like, eh, I don't know, dude, like I can't live in like this, like very landlocked place when the ocean's not too far. So we went and checked out Tampa it was tropical. It was nice. The beach was 40 minutes away, which we didn't really like kind of like take into account, but yeah, we basically moved there just to do it. And, um, I ended up like just working remote accounting because I have an undergrad in accounting and, um, also like Brad, which we'll get into it, um, kind of was like super unhappy with what I was doing, um, here in Chicago, which was an accounting job stopped it but then i picked it back up when i needed money and i didn't really have a direction at that time but i think before we get further into it i just want to point out that like there's a common thread in everything that we talk about and it's just like finding something that you enjoy and then putting a relentless amount of hard work into it and just figuring it out everything can be figured out and it's just finding people i think some of the early mistakes that we're going to talk about is that Eventually, we didn't really model people as well as we could have starting our businesses. It was like we came from a a young, like we know what we're doing and some of the decisions that we made. And when you do hear us talk about it, only take for what it's worth and that like maybe you can make it work in that regard. But also at the same time, like when we talk about Bonafide, like there's definitely some big decisions in there that we could have probably not made that could have made our lives a lot easier. So a lot, in, uh, a lot, yeah, a lot. Like, like literally that's the purpose yeah. of this podcast. I think that me and Brad have been through so much that like, we can share so much wisdom with you guys. Um, and like we a, said, you, you know, we know you're not going to listen to your parents. So maybe right. you'll listen to us, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're not here to tell you anything. We're just here to show you the, the repercussions of actions. And, and that's yeah. really what it is. And I think that if parents maybe delivered their messages a little bit better sure, and just sure. told a story, right? Like imagine if your yeah. mom was just like telling a story or, or, or my mom or my dad or your dad or whatever, and just told a story and didn't implant an actual message, mm-hmm. right? wasn't like, don't do this. Cause right. then if you're like me or like you, you're like, I'm doing that. Like, that's <laughs> like the, like, oh, that's like don't not, drive my car at hundred miles yeah. an hour. Okay. Like, okay. I'll drive well, at 120. Like, just <laughs> take out don't from that sent <laughs> statement that your parents tell yeah. you. And that is literally what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So especially when you have like personality types, like Brad and myself, where it's like a little bit rebellious, like we're not like if you tell us we can't do something, especially if it's something we want to do, prove it's like wrong, that's man. what we're doing. <laughs> you got to prove we, we just want to prove everybody wrong. And sometimes that's a good mentality to have, but we would take yeah. it to extremes of yeah. of too much. So it's like For sure. there's proving people wrong in a good way and there's proving people wrong in a bad way as well. Absolutely. So 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 bona fide, what kind of happened was is I was in Atlanta. You were in Tampa for probably mm-hmm. six to eight months at that time. Yeah, I did. uh, I believe I did 10 months in Tampa and Tampa. So just a quick overview, which we'll probably do a whole episode on health and wellness. But 
I was starting to get really sick at the time. I had a couple surgeries, minor surgeries. I broke my arm in Tampa, which was my third surgery. And then I had mono previously and all of that stuff combined was really actually uh, starting to make me pretty sick. So it was really troublesome for my energy. I was having no energy, depression, anxiety, which not only can come from situation and circumstances that Brad was talking about, but it can also come from a toxic buildup in your body. And it can be expressing itself because anxiety, all these symptoms that we may experience from our health is just kind of like, yo, bro, we need you to do something. And here we need your attention. So that's what was happening at the time, which then led me to start dropping down from Atlanta, from Tampa, driving up actually, to then see Brad, because that's where Brad was on my way home, because I was moving yep. back to Chicago at the time, because I literally couldn't care for myself at that time, which I've never told you this. Super grateful for like you being so patient with me, because over our, and I've never really like you. Yeah. You've given me, you know, a little grief about like bringing my own water and food and stuff like that. Right. But that's like, just, that's you just me poking super, fun. That's me right, poking fun. Super patient overall of like my situation, which was extremely challenging for me at that time. So I, I just want to say that I'm super grateful for you being always, there throughout man. the entire time and not like, you never really like judged me for that. It was always like, Oh, here comes Billy with his waters. It wasn't like you're dumb. Like, don't do that. Why are you doing that? Like, you're fine. You never did that, which was super no. awesome. I mean, that's no different than you saying, Oh, you're going to go and play video games for 10 hours or like, it's, yeah, it's just, no, it's no I different. would never say that like, because I, <laughs> it's just, po it's I mean, I've done it for one and for two, like I'm not, I can't judge like what your vision yeah, or direction is. You know what I mean? I mean, I've tried, you know, you know, like I've taken what you've done and I've tried it, man. I've, I have, yeah. and I, I can't do it. I can't do it, man. I don't got For what, I don't, health. I can't do it, man. That's, Bro, a, whole, that's a whole other thing. Let's stay on bona fide here. So I know, I know. I, I have my roller coasters <laughs> with it. But so, so yeah, you're you're driving up. You you stay with me for a couple of days. Really yeah. funny story with. Oh, are you gonna go into the cockroach? <laughs> <laughs> but, what's the story you're gonna oh tell? my gosh no i was gonna go into the uh, okay so yeah, yeah do, yeah, do that one do that one so so he stays at he stays at my place for like a couple months right like, yeah a cu couple couple days it was like two or three oh, days yeah, or like whatever three, three, three or four days i think uh and and one thing if you're up north is like there's not cockroaches up north and honestly there's so the not really any in north or like, florida like yay big like if you yeah. see one i like maybe saw one my entire life and it was like this big and they were like and that was big like right? and, like maybe me yeah and that's like what maybe half an inch max like not yeah, not that not that not that big and yeah. <laughs> he's in the shower wasn't it uh yeah i think i was in the shower i think, yeah, yeah. I think you opened like the shower curtain and you're like way. what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah so legitimately like if you guys don't know like i'm sure florida has some too but in in tampa there's there's no cockroaches like that but georgia is like it's if you haven't been is heavily densely forest that they've intertwined a city into which is nothing like i've ever experienced before it's a beautiful place to live and so like if you're driving down a highway, like in Illinois, there's no trees on the side of the highway. It's like, you know, just flat land like Brad talked about. But in Atlanta, if you're driving down the highway, like there are massive trees. And with all this like dense forest brings big bugs. The bigger, the denser the forest, like in Costa Rica, you have bigger <laughs> bugs. But in Atlanta, they don't have like monster bugs like the size of your hand. But these cockroaches are probably two inches yeah. legitimate. And these ones, that one probably wasn't a cockroach. That was probably it was a like tree a water bug. Beetle. It was like a water beetle, yeah. I think. Because because I think I think what happens a lot, like in apartments, is they come up the water pipes and stuff like that. And I think yeah. that's what causes it more than cockroaches. Um, they're not yeah, as nasty they as cockroaches, but they're huge. They're big. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the first time I experienced that. I literally walked out of the shower directly down, like as soon as you open the door, big long hallway, straight to your front door, actually. And so I opened the door and there was just this two inch dark black, probably an inch thick water bug sitting there. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, what I'm just like, no big deal. That? Just smash like, it. What is that? And he's like, smash it. I'm like, dude, I don't even want to touch that thing. Like, I legit don't want to touch that thing. Like just smash that thing, dude. It doesn't, it doesn't deserve to be there. Um, oh. So yeah, we do that. And then you were doing like, uh, you went over to the, where I worked. Uh, I, I tried oh, to convince Billy to stay there and, yeah. and everything and like, see what the work was, but with his health issues and stuff, it wasn't, it wasn't right for him to be painting cars and being around the body shop and stuff. But, um, and then I just spur of the moment, do you remember me buying a car spur of the moment? Yeah. 
so Brad, I, I roll up and Brad's driving, which like, how many cars, have, I mean, how many cars have you had? Like uh, five, had, six, seven? Yeah, like five or six at this point. Yeah. So I had, a, I had an yeah. avalanche because I lived up yeah. in Illinois, man, the snow and everything. So like I had yeah, that, I had that Tiburon and I crashed it in the snow because of sliding. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So like I, I, cr- I slid into a curb and I crashed it and okay. like it broke like my axles and stuff like that. So then wow. like, so then I got a. It wasn't anything mm-hmm. major. Like it was literally like I was going to my detail shop and like I just hit a patch of ice and boom, you right, know, which hit happens. A, yeah, and, and like the the wheels just, you know, you you hit the wheels and the axles just mm-hmm. bend and stuff like that. That car was in the shop so much for getting hit for being parked. Mm. Like the car just needed to go away. So I bought. I had an avalanche <laughs> and like the avalanche was great, man. Yeah. Like I had heated seats and I had this yeah. big truck in the winter. Like I was like, oh yeah. And then, it was good for the purpose because how far away from your job? Dude, you I was actually? a block away from my work. <laughs> like <laughs> I didn't drive anywhere. Right. So so then I, I moved to Atlanta and I'm in over an hour away from where I work. Because like I had to live somewhere that wasn't yeah. in that area. So I'm driving an hour or two and from work, and Billy just goes like, Bro, like, you know how much money you're spending on gas? <laughs> and I'm just like no, I've never really thought about it. I calculated. I was spending seven hundred and fifty dollars a month on gas. I think we were going to the shop, and on the way back, I said that's Brad. On I don't know, we were probably on two eighty five or something like like one of the highways. And I think like literally that night, he calculated all of it out, realized that he was spending like hundreds of dollars a month on gas. Unbelievable. Wakes up the next morning, and what would you do? What you do? I go. I go. Billy, we're going to the car dealership. I'm buying a different car. <laughs> legitimately. I was from an avalanche to a Civic overnight. Like overnight. legitimately overnight. Yeah. There is zero thought process in it. Like, <laughs> holy cow, I'm spending this much in gas. Not anymore. I'm not. Yeah. But to think about I do it, miss like, that, that truck, car though. served you so incredibly well because when we moved into like later businesses, right? Like having a really fuel efficient vehicle and traveling like we did driving all the equipment across the country was like super good. So like, it's crazy to think back now that like decisions like that, that happened, like it was just so like, it had to happen. It was so like in line and it just did it. Like looking back now, it's just like, oh my God, like imagine if you would have bought like a different car that wouldn't have served you and that didn't get like almost 40 miles to the gallon. Could we have done it? Right. Exactly. And so then we do that and then we're sitting there the night before you leave. And I don't even know. Uh, oh, oh yeah. I know. I know exactly how it happened. Mm, yeah. You had your sketchbook mm-hmm. and you opened your sketchbook and you're like, Hey man, look, I was drawing this. I think you were drawing something to like, uh, make into like a painting or something like that. And mm-hmm. I think it, it was like a bull. It had something to do with the bulls. If I, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly, oh, you had this yeah, drawing, yeah. Yeah. you had this drawing of something with the bulls and you're like, Hey mm-hmm. man, look, I was sketching this. Like I want to, I want to make it bigger and I want to paint it and frame it or, or, or whatever. And I was like, yeah. Oh dude, that's really cool. And you're like, yeah, I really like designing and drawing this stuff. And I was like, I, I didn't know where I'm just like, do you want to make a clothing company? <laughs> And it's just like, like, he's just like, yeah, I've always wanted to do that. (laughs) I'm just like, it's the truth, man. Like design is just fun. Like it's so fun. We're just like, we're just like, okay, so that just happened. And then it's like the rest of that night was, how do we do this? Let's Mm -hmm. find out how we make all this stuff and do it all. And, and then we're like, how do we come up with a name? It was just like a logo. It was just like us. I don't even know, dude, I don't know how you came up with the logo. Cause I honestly think, and I'm not trying to like, toot your horn or my horn because we have owner you know like we started it or whatever but like i legit think it's one of the coolest logos out there like there's so many people that see that logo they're like dude that logo is sick like people that have don't even care anything about me or anything about anything so we were literally just like drawing bees you know like what what could our name be what could our what could our logo be and we're like because we were thinking bees because brad and billy which break and build is so we love the letter b come on (laughs) it's intertwined so we wanted to do b and then we're and then but we wanted it to have uh, a meaning and stuff like that so we started looking up like definitions and going through like words and we're like i I legit think you had a paper yeah dictionary i did I had a paper and I was looking through all of them. Like I literally started at the first beat and I was going through all of them. You're sitting on my, my orange wrapped Ikea couch in my apartment going (laughs) through a paper dictionary. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. I remember it, man. I remember it. There's gotta be a B word. That's literally the thought. There has to be a B word in here. That's going to line up to be what we're going to do. That was the, that was the thought. Like it's going to be in here. And we came across Bonafide and we're just like, yep. 
it means genuine, you know, unique, sincere. Yep. So it's without like, intent, to deceive, without intent one to deceive. Of the big ones. Yeah, like so, one. so like, we're just like, yeah, let's just, let's just live by that motto. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. And, you know, we just, we did it and we had a, we had a really, so we did bona fide designs. It was mm-hmm. the actual, you know, company's LLC. name. Yep. And then we kind of spun off of that and we went into bona fide uh, boarding and we went right. super sports focused with like uh, mm-hmm. skateboarding and snowboarding. Cause we were yeah. both big into that type of stuff. I rollerbladed, he skateboarded, right. we both snowboarded. We did a lot of and I had some connections sports. in the scene, right? Obviously, because yep. I had a bunch of friends. So it was like, maybe we could potentially build this thing and then sponsor somebody that I have a relationship yep. with, which was a challenge in itself, man. Did we learn some stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, and then money, I was like, like, hey, I could yeah. fuel the gaming side and we'll do this whole yep. like kind of thing. You have that side. I have this gaming side that I'm super in. in. And, mm-hmm. you know, after that, it was probably not even a month later, like I just pick up and so Billy moved back up to Chicago. Yep. We're getting all this stuff kind of sorted. We're doing designs. We're working with mm-hmm. one of our buddies who is a good designer, you know, shout outs to zero. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huge shout outs <laughs> to him. And he is, he's actually passed away. Yeah, um, man. So huge shout outs to him for helping us, you know, get that started. He, you know, helped with the logo. He helped with a lot of our first clothing designs, super yeah. good buddy. And he was a coach for my gaming team. So like really, really mm. close friend at the time. And, uh, you know, we went through these designs. We found this website that we could get stuff ordered. We ordered a bunch of inventory. We just yeah. said, screw it. We picked oh, out, man. we picked out two designs. We did a bunch of colors. We ordered a bunch of inventory and then I had a bunch of inventory and we didn't know what we were going to do with it yet. Exactly. Um, yeah, so this is a huge lesson in itself right here. Like <laughs> huge lesson. So like there's power in the process, there's power in speed. But then once it comes to spending a large amount of money on something that you're yeah. not already pre-sold, there is a very, very <laughs> hard stop, I would suggest doing. Like hard. I'm all into speed in your business. And this is where we got caught up with our speed, was because we were speeding hardcore. We like loved the designs, we loved all this stuff, we love this. And then we asked some friends and they're like, yeah, that's dope. And so we're, we were like, so amped on just like life. Everyone's right? going to so buy it, man. Like, Everybody. Yeah, it's literally like, it's there's nothing easy stopping it. To sell $4,000 worth of inventory after we've never actually seen anybody put a dollar into that. Right. Yeah. So in, in, in this lesson, like it's so powerful to have some type of prototype and yep. to take that prototype to somebody, like, let's say like your buddy that says your clothes are dope right? Like it's your friend, right? So you're like, Hey, give me $20. And when I get this in, I will give you one. Right. Yeah. And if so they don't want to give you the money, it's not willing to transact yeah. that money towards that product. It's worthless at that point. So it's not worth spending a hundred thousand. If you're in a crazy business or 4,000, like we did in this instance to get close. Number one, we didn't test a lot of things. Number two, we didn't like test the market to yeah. see if people were actually going to put money towards with. So then we got all this inventory and we have $4,000 worth of inventory, which we overpaid for. And but, was probably like, what? but we got super lucky. We so did get we, really lucky. we definitely overpaid like, cause we didn't know, we didn't do enough research, right? We went to like, a, right. uh, just the first Jack screen print. printer that we found and no, not even dude. I think it was just like Jack Prince, dude. Yeah. 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 That's what it was. And super so, generic. Like it's just a super generic website. Nothing yep. against them. They do really stuff. good work. But uh, if you're looking to be economical, it's it's not the most it's not efficient price process. Efficient. Yeah. yeah. So so then what happened was is we get all this stuff, and we're like, "Yo, these shirts are messed up. Like mm. they were printed oh, on the collars. Man. So like you know the collars of the shirts of the sleeves mm-hmm. where the seams hit. We're like, we can't. Yeah. We physically can't sell this. If there's one thing that we are the biggest sticklers about it is quality and everything we do. 100%. Like it's like, and that that's, that's honestly, it's our biggest downfall. And when we, when we were going to start this podcast, I said, look, dude, we just got to start mm-hmm. this and make adjustments True. as we move. I said, mm-hmm. we cannot make this be a hundred percent from the start, because if we sit right. there and make it a hundred percent from the start, we ain't starting this for a year. No, because the, our brains go, the, lo- the logo, the logo is not perfect. The color is not perfect. Yeah. The audio quality is not right. perfect. The camera is not perfect. Yeah. Oh, we messed this up. Like, wow, we just started doing this whole thing. Right, right, and, right. And so we get these shirts and we're like, this is unsellable. Like, we can't do it. Right. So 
they reprinted the entire order for us and we kept mm -hmm. all the messed up inventory. So we're like, okay, mm -hmm. well, we can give these messed up ones away. Right. Like it's not the best for our brand, but do people really care? Will they really notice or say anything? No, because they're not paying yeah, for especially it. Especially for free, right? Exactly. So we're like, hey, we got this whole stack of stuff that is giveaway free inventory. And now we've got mm -hmm. double the amount to sell. So this is great. Now giving yeah. stuff away doesn't eat into our sales. This is awesome. Yeah, we did get really lucky. I suggest you guys not bank on getting lucky. <laughs> but in this instance, we had a graphic that was big, long, ver it was like horizon what, what would you call this it's like vertical. sideways it's, it's yeah, yeah yeah it's like kind of at an angle right from your yeah, like, like from the right your shoulder, shoulder kind of down, like down to the middle past the left yeah. breast towards like the like the left side of your belly yeah. button so it was this big bona fide print and how they printed it was over the collar and if you guys know anything or don't know anything but how you screen print is like you have to put an underbase under it of white if it's going to be a bright color on a dark shirt so they put an underbase and then the way they laid the colors over on top left white hanging through by the collar which you shouldn't have printed over the collar in the first place if you're a screen printer right like they sized it for bigger shirts is what it seemed like yeah. it was so it's like oh the 3x it's fine on and then as you went smaller and smaller uh, it's screen really... printed over everything so instead of sizing uh -huh. it for the smallest shirt they sized it for the largest shirt which that's definitely an error on the screen printers part because yeah. they should know better than to print over a collar however it really worked out well so we had all this inventory had that and it also worked out we also got really lucky that brad happened to pick a shirt that looked like it fit good right and so it actually came out to be one of the shirts that we uh brands that we actually kept on using so yeah. we had a couple shirts that we didn't use that brand because like it, everything's not created equal right like there's different qualities in every market so we wanted to get clothing and one of the other reasons we were doing bona fide was because we had a really good idea that like skateboard clothing was like this big boxy kind of like fit stuff. Like nothing was fitted yeah. at the time. It was like all skateboarders, most are typically like skinnier people and they're giving them these typical standard uh, American fit shirts um, that are just like long and hanging. So the goal was like find really good quality stuff that feels good, fits good and is durable. And so one of the things that Brett actually picked happened to be that, which another really lucky and blessing disguise in there. Yeah, and, the, and if anybody is wondering what that shirt is, it's a next level 3600. It is. It is such a good mm -hmm. shirt. And like to this That's day, everyone's shirt. like, these are the most comfy shirts. The ink sticks to mm -hmm. them forever. Like they're so good. Like next yep. level. And then like the second choice that is a little bit more variety and other stuff is Bella Canvas. Like next mm -hmm. level and Bella Canvas are like yep. the shirt companies in my sure. humble opinion. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we did that. We got all the inventory. And then I basically decided that I hated my job again. And like, mm -hmm. I was like, dude, like living here in Atlanta, <laughs> I'm by myself. I, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, man. I wasn't making any friends. It wasn't, it wasn't a good environment. So mm -hmm. I picked up and moved back up to Illinois and mm -hmm. we set up. Uh, so then, so then we go, we go, okay, we're back in Illinois. We've got all this inventory. Yeah. What do we do? Well, Billy's trying to get, you know, these athletes from like the extreme sports side. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, like MLG has got these big events. Let's just mm. go to an MLG event <laughs> with all of our stuff yeah. and just get it in people's hands. So yeah. like, this is like the worst thing you can ever do. I'm, I'm going to state that to start off because it is <laughs> against so many rules of conventions and it, yeah. it makes you look like an ass. Like mm -hmm. it is not good. It no. was great for us. Like it, it was it did work fantastic out really well for, us. for us, but, <laughs> but I, I would not do not recommend going, it yeah. at all. No. So, so <laughs> the first some friends and some frenemies. So we went to, we did this for two events, right? So the first one we went to was MLG Orlando in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we go to MLG Orlando 2011 uh, I don't know about you, dude, but I feel like that event was kind of like a breakthrough event for us. It, like, it was. It, it was even, awesome. Energetically, like contact wise, just everything about that event was just kind of like a surreal yeah. experience of kind of trying to like almost be an influencer without like being a pro gamer. Right. So we, I don't know. That was just an epic time. And I'm like we basically I had this giant duffel bag <laughs> and we just packed it with as much clothes as we can. Mm -hmm. And we just lanyards and stickers. lanyards, stickers. And we just go there. With me, Billy, 
And, uh, and then I had a couple buddies cause I was actually playing in that event as well. Mm. And so, uh, did you actually play though? I feel like something happened. I, th- Oh, one of our teammates didn't show up. So we just like lost yeah. the first round. We like had a mm. team and then a teammate just doesn't show up and it was great. Mm. Uh, so we're like, okay, yeah, let's just do this. So like we, um, we had, a uh, a buddy who, uh, was a f- somewhat of a photographer and stuff like that. So we mm-hmm. did a kind of a, f- a mock photo shoot at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando. So we got all these dope <laughs> photos and then we're hanging out with like me and all these pro players and stuff like that, yeah. you know, giving them gear, becoming friends with them and doing stuff like mm-hmm. shout outs to, you know, strong side and, uh, Marcus Rob. and dude, hoaxer Rob. Rob, dude, like all these people that yeah. like really helped us. I think we know, might have met Blaze there foot. too. Blaze, yeah, dude. Oh man, sure. Blaze. Um, and and so like we start doing the stuff. They really like us. We uh, we then became super good friends with like uh, Dr Pepper Rob and the guys at mm-hmm. the Dr Pepper booth and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had competitions going on all the time, and we wanted dinner with all the Dr Pepper girls. And we're yeah. like, okay, this is cool. We won? Uh, was it your yoga stuff that you did? Oh yeah, dude, that's right. It was the uh, and like you and pose. you and you and T two were were posing together, and yeah. then you yeah, yeah. you won it, dude. It was the crow pose, bro. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I they did like a out. yoga dude. pose competition, and Billy Billy's hold doing it, the longest, it. right? Yeah, and Billy held it the longest, and he won us like this Dang, this I didn't dinner. Remember that. Oh my God. So Dr. Pepper, you know, and all the, all the Dr. Pepper girls that were there, you know, running the booths and everything, um, go to dinner I've with been us. I've a lot of gaming conventions and the model agency that Dr. Pepper used, those girls were extremely attractive. I don't I'm just going to say that. <laughs> were so, they not, dude? Like, <laughs> like I, I, I see, like, hey, I go to, it. go to gaming conventions all the time yeah. and like, Looking back on like just the those the specific the, number one they were all super cool number two they're, I was like they're very nice they're nice. really attractive girls and I was like geez like this is crazy and then like the next event all the Dr Pepper girls must have not used that agency or must they must have been local or whatever they yeah, were like there was only like none one of them were the, the same. same people yeah and so we we give them all the shirts we get photos and stuff so like we start to just really just get our brand out there and stuff like that yeah. so it was really fun and then we went to. And then I, I'll never, I'll never forget it, man. I got to talk about Andy for a second after, after that dinner, because uh-huh. so Andy is one of, one of Billy's really good friends through uh, college, college and roommate. stuff like that. Yeah. And so, uh, after that event and we got this photo with, there's what, 10 of them, <laughs> just these 10, you know, gorgeous women. And, uh, he goes, he's like, Oh, I'm so mad. I didn't go with you guys. And like, <laughs> he was so mad. Cause we invited him to go with us. And like, Dude, he was so, so mad. He didn't go with us. And so he's <laughs> like, I'm going to the next too. one with you. Yeah. So then he goes to the next one with us, which was uh, Rhode Island. And this is kind of where we made uh, bigger mistakes. So Florida was all good. We hooked, we hooked up with strong side. We started doing mm-hmm. designs for him. And then Rhode Island, we actually had like a hundred shirts for him to you know, give to his fans and sell to his fans yeah, and stuff. That's right. So we did stuff with strong side and a couple shirt designs. So if anybody has his mm-hmm. shirt designs from that 2011, 2012 era, yeah, that was that us. Crazy. <laughs> um, and, uh, so, you know, Mike was a super good friend and, you know, I still would say he is a good friend. If we hit him up and talk to him, I'm sure he would chat with yeah, us. I like Mike a lot. And, uh, so we're at Rhode Island and this is where we just went like balls to the walls, stupidity. We're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, st- we go into the convention. <sighs> we stood there as people were walking in, giving them oh, lanyards, man. stickers, yeah. and raffle tickets. So the crazy thing is actually Orlando, not we did idea. not have lanyards. I don't think we had lanyards in Orlando. Did we not? We do we just I don't think stickers? we did because this one, so we also got lucky with the lanyards as well. We <laughs> ordered lanyards so dumb, and man. they were all falling apart because they weren't sewn properly. So they literally sent us another round of lanyards yeah. and my mom and I, who had a sewing machine, literally stayed up and double sewed every single lanyard. lanyard. There was like 500 the entire couple days before just sewing them to make sure that they were reinforced and they wouldn't break apart. So yeah, we, like Brad said, we literally stood in the middle, so like, dumb. as if we were like the welcomers. I'm sorry. I, I, I am sorry, Lando. Adam, if you ever hear this. I'm sorry yeah. we did this at your event. <laughs> I'm sorry too, man. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't thinking. Like we were, honestly, we're just like we get. We're just gonna like we never thought. Like I mean, hey, we're like, like 21 really years. We're like 21 us. years old, man. Yeah. Like we don't know. 
we don't know better yet. <laughs> no, we did not know <laughs> raw better. marketing. We're like, we can do this. Why not? Yeah. So we got kicked out. Mm -hmm. But, but, but we delivered every single lanyard and took raffle we tickets, did. phone numbers and email addresses to enter people into the raffle to win. I don't even know. What Super they were illegal. We should not have been doing that. No. And <laughs> we, we, we gave away all of our lanyards, yep. which was probably 500 before they found us. Yeah. And we were not hard to find. They're like, when they found us, they were literally like, I remember been looking this conversation. You guys, because we've been seeing these. And it was three days. Us. So we, yeah. we stood there for three days and we yeah. had like these top players wearing our gear and stickers yeah. and like all this stuff. And like Sunday, right before the finals is like when we get caught and kicked out and yeah. we're just like, Oh, I guess it's okay. It's just, we're going to miss the finals. Okay. <laughs> yeah, which was upsetting because you know you want to yeah, see that. Yeah. So I think we literally just went back to our hotel room and watched, I watched it like it, on yeah. a live stream. Yep. That's exactly what happened. But yeah, I mean, it was like super guerrilla marketing. We shouldn't have been doing it. Like, sure, if we're out on the streets or in the hotel lobby, completely different. We were yeah. through MLG's convention doors yeah. as people were walking through the floodgates, Big as no if we were a vendor of the convention doing this. And we should in not somebody's have been doing event. It. Yes, that you don't pay to be a vendor at <laughs> big no no big no <laughs> no do, do not do it uh yeah. we're Maybe very lucky that that out. there was not Front of the arena or something but not inside <laughs> we, we are so lucky there was not worse repercussions than just getting kicked out like for sure. uh so thank you for for not giving us worse repercussions but uh we definitely learned it i mean it helped us guerrilla market and get our name out there and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i mean that was that was really the starting point of bona fide and what it started to become and i think we'll talk you know more in the next episodes of totally kind of more uh in my background and what i'm doing now more in billy's background mm -hmm. what he's doing now that'll be kind of the next two episodes and then we're going to start the fourth episode in what bona fide led us into which is arena gaming league and kind yeah. of our next thing there's a lot of lessons and stuff within bona fide that we'll kind of hit on through like every episode and stuff mm -hmm. like that. If we went on and just talked about everything in Bonafide, it'll take us a year to talk about that. So, so we're going to sprinkle kind of everything that we learn and how we progress. And this gets us to that first stage of we started breaking into the gaming scene and the industry. We started our clothing company and we started learning this stuff. And kind of mm -hmm. where that takes us next is, uh, you know, how we further progress Bonafide because we started Bonafide in 2011. That's seven years, seven years ago. Um, nine, bro. Not, oh my God, that's nine years ago? Yep. So that's nine years ago now. Mm -hmm. And nine I mean, years. we ran that very, very hard for a solid seven and a half, eight years. Um, yep. And it grew to a very, very strong point. So we'll kind of go into how it grew, the lessons that we learned, how we wasted mm -hmm. $50,000 essentially on crap. Um, yep. it, it's unbelievable. Like the amount of, uh, stuff that we did, but I don't really have anything else. This is kind of where I, I think we could wrap up this podcast and thank everybody for watching and listening and stuff like that. And obviously this is the first podcast. We're going to have three more episodes released with this. So we'll have four episodes mm -hmm. coming out right now. So if you like this and you want to continue our story and everything and learning mm -hmm. kind of where we're doing, jump into the next one. Um, absolutely. Any closing words for you, Billy, on this one? Nope. Just want to appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you for all the support you guys show us as always. We're going to see you guys out on that next podcast. Peace. Deuces.